So hey and welcome back to Vita vs 3DS. In this video I just wanted to show you guys my 3DS and Vita capture card units as well as give like a quick kinda walkthrough about how to capture direct feed video on your 3DS or on your Vita. So um, the link where I purchased these uh, this 3DS and this Vita is in my description. Um, they are brand new units as you can see from looking at my red Vita which isn't sold here. Um, a lot of, I get a lot of questions uh, basically about the guy who sells them. I, I can just say without a shadow of a doubt that this guy is very, very reliable, both in terms of his work, like is the product working, it will work, and also uh, in terms of the, how he, you know, responds to you. Like if you ask if you if you ask him a question, he will get back to you promptly, and he will give you very good information on how to solve those issues. I did have a lot of technical issues at the beginning, and it was him who helped me through them through email and everything. And he's just great. So if that was ever a worry for you, don't worry about it. So let's take a look at the hardware here. So this is an American 3DS unit, as you can see here, it looks more or less the same. The only difference is this added port right here. So you have your normal charging port right here, but this added USB port right here. And that's where your direct feed video is going to come from. Okay? This Vita here, this is a Japanese Vita as you can see by the red color. And uh, again, it looks more or less the same, no real differences, but the only difference is the other added USB port right here. So that's where the Vita is coming, the video is coming from the Vita. It's the same cord, so you only need one cord for 3DS and one cord for Vita. So we are going to start with the Vita. So when you get your package, it's going to come with a piece of paper in very poor translated English. <laughs> um, but it's basically going to give you a link where you can download the viewer, and the viewer is where you're going to see it on your screen. So, I already have the viewer nice and installed. I'm not going to walk you through how to install that. It's fairly easy. If you have Windows 8, it already comes with the drivers necessary to view, uh, the, to have the viewer working. If you have Windows 7, you'll need to install the drivers manually. So, there's, you know, it's not that hard. A lot of people can get through it. Anyway, so, two things you need. First, first, you need the cable. This is plugged into my computer. This is a cable. It's a standard, you know. USB size. This is actually the same size they use to uh, charge your PS3 controllers or, you know, whatever. Very common. Plug that in right here. That captures your video. Next, you need a 3.5 millimeter male to male um, audio cord right here. And I want you to look carefully at this audio cord. This is going to tell you so you can avoid the mistake that I made at the beginning. See how it has two lines? That's what you want. You don't want one with three lines because three lines indicates it's, it has microphone capabilities and when you use that it kind of creates static in your video and that becomes very, that was very evident in my um, first Killzone Direct Feed video and my uh, first 3DS capture card test with, new super, with um, super Mario 3D Land. Anyway, get that in there. Get, make sure you get this. This was like $12, $12 at, a, at a, a convenience store so not a problem. Anyway, it's not going to set up on its own now. So, now that these are both plugged in First thing you do, of course, is you power up your Vita. So that's working. Before I peel off my screen, let's get the viewer running. And ba-boom, there it is. Let's get this full screen here. There we go. So, let's get this up a little bit here. So, anything you do on your Vita is done on the big screen. And, of course, it's very, very responsive. There may be a little bit of lag, but you know I really haven't noticed much at all. And you can actually use this if you hook up your computer to an HDMI cable into a TV. You can actually play your Vita games on the big screen, which is kind of nice. So we'll get uh, Dragon's Crown booted up over here. Own pirate hideout. And of course, I have it coming through my speakers there. So. Yeah, it runs really, really well. Runs up to 60 frames per second. Um, you can set if your computer doesn't have, you know, the right hardware or doesn't have, like, you know, uh, isn't very, very powerful. Uh, you can actually change the, 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 the resolution it plays at. Like, for example, in my first video, I was uploading at um, uh, 544i, not 544p. That's why it looked a little fuzzy. The resolution wasn't very good. Looked kind of interlaced and everything. Um, you can do that if you have weaker hardware, but I really recommend running at this setting, 544p uh, progressive. And also, one really, really important thing, and especially for Vita, if you want to capture footage on the Vita, and 3S it's not that big of an issue, maybe it affects frame rate, but on the Vita, very, very, very important. 
So you have your, my USB cord here, which is going into my computer. Okay, I'm not gonna pull the tripod down so you can see that, but whatever, it's, it's inside my computer. Make sure that there's nothing plugged in next to that USB port. Make sure that the whole line, if there's another USB port next to it, make sure you have that whole line free. Because usually when you have two USB slots, slots or three or four or whatever next to each other, they're all connected to the same hub. And when they're connected to the same hub, the power is divided. So you're not gonna have a good transfer rate if you, if you do that. Like you're, it's not gonna be able to transfer at the, you know, whatever it needs to run this resolution, the best resolution. So you're gonna have to go one down, which does affect your video quality. So make sure you have nothing else beside where you plugged in your, your Vita USB. But anyway, it's very easy to get it going. Um, okay, so this is how to display it on the screen. Now how to capture it is, have it running in a window, I use Bandicam. Bandicam is a great program. Unfortunately, when you run it, it actually freezes your Vita screen, so you have to restart it, which takes two seconds. There you go. So I have Bandicam over here. Um, it, you can target your window. It basically, um, here, let me zoom in. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, but. There you go, let's zoom in a little bit. There you go. See, up here, it targets what window you're gonna record. And you could choose the you know the FPS, the video quality, what resolution you wanted or whatever. But right now it's set already on my Vita window over here. So you just press the record button and you're able to record everything in whatever resolution you want from right from your Vita captured on the screen right here. And that's how I was able to upload the videos I was able to upload. So that's basically what you do it. So um, I'm just gonna go set up my 3DS one and show you what it looks like on the screen and then we'll call it a video. All right, so 3DS is the exact same story. Right over here, you have your USB slot where that's, this is uh, the same cord I use for my Vita is going right inside my 3DS. So that goes right there. Then the audio 3.5 millimeter jack is going right in the spot over here, like normal where your headphones go in. All right, so there now you hear my 3DS audio through my speakers. And what we're going to do now is open up the 3DS viewer, which you get in the download link when you purchase from this guy. And ba-boom, there it is on my screen. Let's get it up here. Let's go full screen, actually. There you go. There it's running on... Uh, and you can record the same way through Bandicam. You can record uh, this footage. So with this, actually, you have a little more, a little, you know, a few more options. So you can actually change, um, you know, the size of it, like if you want it really small or... You know, if you want it bigger or whatever, um, I like to personally go uh, twice twice the size, like this. And then after that, you get to choose the ratio of the screen. So personally, I like this. A nice big top screen. And then, you know, if you want a little information on the bottom screen. You can also get rid of the bottom screen completely. Or you can make the bottom screen run in a different window if you just wanted to record that. So it's pretty fully fully functional. You have multiple resolutions. You have multiple, you know, image quality. You know, you got stabilizers. You have even, you can even put on um, uh, bilinear filtering. Which, you know, creates a sort of... Um, uh, you know, like when you blow something up on a screen, it, it makes it a little uh, you know, anti-aliasing better. It gets rid of all the jaggies and stuff like that. It's actually, it actually looks really nice on Vita. Um, but yeah, it um, it's perfectly functional. And, and uh, you know, like this is the same way you use Bandicam, run a Bandicam, hit record. And actually the 3DS video is actually much lower in size because it doesn't have to be as high resolution as the Vita does. So anyway, so that's it. Um... Do I recommend these? I recommend these wholeheartedly to anyone that is doing, uh, let's say, Let's Plays or reviews on YouTube and everything, uh, because, primarily because, and I don't know if you guys know how much effort I have put into making off-screen reviews very, very clear, but I'm just going to give like a quick, maybe like a little, you know, quick uh, going over of exactly what I had to do. Okay, so... To get off-screen, high-quality off-screen footage, and I'll, like to anybody who who can't afford these things, you should probably listen to this because you know, like this is pretty much the best you can do. You need to get an HD camcorder or a digital SLR, which is capable of filming a screen in well enough, like better than a phone does. Okay. Then you need a stand. So this stand is the one that came with Kid Icarus Uprising, and I've been using it consistently since I got the game because it's comfortable with both Vita and 3DS. Put the Vita or 3DS on the stand. Then you're going to notice that the Vita is slightly tilted this way. So you need to put something under here to kind of prop it up like this. Then after that, you got to tape this to your desk. 
or whatever you have it on. And make sure it's nice and straight, tape it to your desk so it doesn't move whatever. Then you gotta set up your camera and zoom in on the screen a lot, you know, and adjust it, maybe move it closer or whatever, and make it so that you can just see the Vita screen and that's it, like this. And then you gotta focus and get it nice and perfect and everything and have it so it's not moving and voila, that's how you do it. Of course I'm holding it up here so it's not, you know, it's not super high quality like that. But, uh, but yeah, I took a lot of effort. I had to do that for every, every single video that I've ever done. And, you know, that's why I haven't done Let's Plays. That's why I've been slow in the reviews, because it literally takes about 15, 20 minutes to set up. You know, I got to set everything up, take it down, record on my camcorder, transfer that, you know, edit the quality if the quality's not good. It takes a long, long, long time. So I'm so relieved that anybody who money is not that much of an issue you should go ahead and get these to start your channel, like do Let's Plays or do reviews or, or, or comparisons or things like this. It just makes it so much, it's not just cleaner and better looking and more accurate, but it's just so much easier. Just plug, play, and hit a button to record. Anyway, so um, if you have any questions on, on the units, I'd be happy to answer them. If you guys have any questions on how to record off-screen footage like I just showed you, or any pointers or anything, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's it for now, and I will see you guys soon.